Hi guys, welcome to another edition of Small Cap Investor CEO Interviews. I'm here today with Josh Bruni, who is the CEO of American Aries. It's a very exciting new deal I've been looking at. They essentially make EMF protection products, which protect you against EMF radiation. So it's a very exciting new company, and I uh, can't wait to get into this. Thank you for taking cool. the time to do this, Josh. Yeah. yeah. Let's uh, let's start off with a bit of your background. I know you have a very extensive background in marketing and, and building brands. Uh, so can you talk a bit about that and how you got involved with American Airs? Yeah, I, I've been building companies for over 25 years and I uh, had the opportunity to work with some really great big brands that were growing like rocket ships and got to learn really early in my career what that looked like and how to do that, how to manage it too. And I uh, worked with Ancestry.com in the early years and before people knew it as Ancestry, back then it was called MyFamily.com. And that was early 2000s and, you know, I've done a lot since then, everything from fashion apparel to CPG companies, uh, ran marketing agencies and growth, growth agencies, worked with brands at, at retail, online, Amazon, all over the place, and really uh, developing and devising growth strategies that de regardless of where you're selling a product or where you're trying to capture an audience, uh, I would design strategies for that and and really focus on both brand as well as driving conversions and, and growth through the consumer. Perfect. No, that makes sense because I noticed since you've taken over the company, revenues have gone up seven X since you took over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's gonna it's gonna quite a bit. It's been a wild ride. Yeah. So I guess uh, l let's talk a bit more about uh, the product itself. Can you give us kind of a, a little breakdown of how exactly it works, what it is, and why people should be using this product? In a nutshell, what the product does is take electromagnetic radiation, which is all around us. That's what's emitted by electronic devices, wireless devices, 5G, um, uh, your Wi-Fi router, even electricity in the walls, and and basically any any man-made electrical uh, current or um, uh, radio signal is essentially what our product would, would mitigate against. And it is essentially a silicon resonator chip at the center of it which is what you see and people that have seen it hold it up and you can see like a little hologram effect when you move it around what you're seeing is millions of etchings within that silicon uh, resonator chip and what those etchings do is essentially take that that really structured uh, man-made wave like a 5g wave which is super structured that's how it works and then diffracts it and makes it more uh, compatible with a biological organism. And if to add some some more foundation knowledge there, our bodies, basically every living organism has its own electromagnetic field. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look anything like these man-made fields. And so what the product does is make that man-made electromagnetic field look a lot more like ours. And that's how it works. And that's also why it doesn't interfere with the transmission of data is because it isn't a set removing the field, it's it's modulating in a way that's more compatible. Give us a bit more detail of how this product came to be. Yeah, it's a really good question. Dimitri is the founder, and uh, he is the one that launched the company, the, yep. the consumer company that, that we talk about today. And he is really the product guy. And I joined and took over as CEO, and he's exclusively focused on product. He uh, took this technology from his father and created the current iteration of what we have today. His father and in, in, in our team of scientists that still we still work with um, have been developing this technology over multiple decades. And the initial application was for military use and protecting against the uh, Glimo missile operators. They would be, if you think about remote missile operation, they're in these trailers, these metal boxes yeah. filled with electronics and satellites and all sorts of, of things that generate a high amount of electromagnetic radiation. Mm -hmm. And as a result, though, those groups of people were experiencing quite a bit of health, negative health effects, both from just being lethargic, couldn't finish the day, um, all sorts of illnesses. And that was observed. 
And Dimitri's father had been working on this type of project, was then contracted by military and funded more research. And so we are benefiting from millions of dollars of research and the ability to take that and, and create this consumer version of the product. We, today, the, what we've done to fund more research and to just get this company legs has been to go direct to consumer. Yeah. The technology and the application of the technology though has, has far reaching uh, audiences and applications. And that's what makes this really exciting is who would benefit from this product? Basically every living organism that would be impacted by electromagnetic radiation, which is plants, animals, insects, all sorts of things. We talk about humans quite a bit, but the, the application of this is really far. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the technology, I'm assuming there, there are a lot of skeptics. It's, it's a new technology. What do you have to say um, to those skeptics? Uh, have you done any testing? Uh, what were the results of those, of those tests? And, and how do we really know that this works? Yeah. I mean, that comes up a lot. As someone who thinks a lot about marketing and consumer products and brand, I love a brand that's polarizing. Yeah. There's nothing, I mean, when you're looking at choosing a name for a company, a logo or a slogan, I mean, the ones that are polarizing are the ones that you remember. You have raving fans and you have people that are skeptics. Both of them are loud. And then both of them are telling your story for you or the, the ones that are skeptics give you the opportunity to actually educate. And so we do have a fair amount of skeptics like any new disruptive technology. And uh, what I would say to them is we have patents on both design as well as function. Recently, we were issued a, a global patent based upon the method. And in that process of getting that patent, our, our science team, our research team was actually invited to present their findings uh, of our technology uh, at the International uh, Congress of Information Technologies, which takes place in London every year. And they presented the findings and what this product essentially does, which was really cool. That, that, those findings were then peer reviewed and then published in scientific journals. So that's just one example of that. We have dozens of examples of, of peer reviewed published scientific studies on this product. Even more though, it's actually really simple to demonstrate the effectiveness of the product. Uh, you, some people have maybe seen our videos of sitting with, with consumers, the average person and putting the EEG machine on their head. Yep. And EEG is, is the most accurate real-time biofeedback tool we have available today. And what it's doing is looking at your body's, uh, specifically your brain, your brain's performance and function, and it's incredibly sensitive. So it, it, it sees everything in real time. So you blink your eye, it sees it. You move your ear, if you can wiggle your ears, you can, it can see it. If you sneeze, you cough, you talk, whatever. Um, if, you, if you're nervous, you're anxious, it, it, all of that stuff is, is captured in that EEG. And you can see the effects of a cell phone with an EEG, how neurons start to fire up in a, in a very hyperactive way. And then you can see the benefit of the product as well, which is those neurons slow down and balance out. And um, I don't know if you'll be linking to any of those videos that we have, but we can do live demonstrations virtually anywhere. I can call basically any neuroscientist that uses an EEG machine and they can demonstrate that, which is exactly what we did in that video. I had never, ever met that neuroscientist before in that, in our really popular video. And he showed up the day that we shot that and did his thing and left. <laughs> that was it. It's so, yeah. So, so I've seen those, those, uh, scans and the ones where they are using a cell phone, it's kind of red, yeah. uh, splotchy all over the place. Yeah. And then the ones where they're, they have, uh, the Aries tech, it's just green. So yeah. what is that? Uh, you see the smell. Yeah, you see spectral colors. You see red, which would be hyperactive neurons firing yeah. and in different regions of the brain. And then on the opposite end of that, you'll see like blue. And then there's like shades of all those in between. Green is really what you're looking for is uh, a balanced uh, a better, a balanced brain, let's just say. Okay. And I'm sure there's better terminology, better ways to describe that for simplicity's sake, though. Yeah. That's what you're looking for is is to see that that balanced look. And we... We did that, everything from VR headsets to cell phones in one minute, five minutes, seven minutes. We tested all sorts of variations. And again, this wasn't, I would say, an official con controlled study in this example. This was essentially a demonstration. But our control, our controlled peer-reviewed studies essentially did the same thing, but in an environment that was controlled and essentially got the exact same results. So I took 
the peer reviewed studies that we had and turn that into the, these demonstrations and just followed exactly the structure of those those designed uh, studies. Okay. And yeah, I will post a link to uh, all of the studies. I, I know you have a lot on your website as well as those videos yeah. at the scans for you guys. We can uh, we can post that uh, below. Um, next, let's talk about who's who are your customers? Who's buying this stuff? Who are the biggest buyers for this kind of technology? Yeah, so something really interesting happened when um, I first joined the company. I basically just observed for the first you know few weeks of just, okay, who's buying today? Who are your power users? And uh, who who potentially could be a user, right? And it, what what I saw emerge from that was you had really two extreme use cases that were actually their needs and problems they were solving were actually different. On the one end, the obvious one would be people that um, are hypersensitive to electromagnetic radiation. So there is a group of people that are referred to as EHS or electro hypersensitivity. Uh, and there's a decent percentage of the population globally that would um, put themselves in that category. In the U.S., I believe it's considered an allergy. I think maybe Canada too. In other countries, European countries, it's it's an official diagnosis. Um, so that group is was obvious because our product does provide relief there, and we have hundreds of thousands of of customers that would fit that category already, and they would find their way to us pretty easy. Um, on the other end, and I would say they're looking for, let's say, a wellness upgrade. Mm -hmm. And like I said, looking for to, to level up their baseline. On the other end, which I didn't see this, or didn't anticipate this, were people that I would call high performers. And not just high performers, but people that are top at whatever it is they're doing. Actors, uh, musicians, performers, and primarily athletes across every major sport. We have, uh, as customers today, we have the top athlete in every professional sport is currently a customer. And I'm not talking like someone that's just on a roster. I'm saying like household names that are perennial MVP candidates wow. in, in, every, in every major sport. And so what are their needs? Well, their needs are, um, number one, they are, their bodies are their their tools and they're looking for ways to gain incremental improvements like you and i for me to be an nba player i got a lot to, i got a lot to do right i got a lot to grow and uh, both physically as well as my skills for an existing let's say professional athlete for them to go from like good to great to the, the greatest it's it's super tiny percentages and so our product they find their way to our product because of those reasons which is they're looking for a better sleep, better recovery, better focus. And our product provides that because what it does is it's eliminating that external interference of electromagnetic radiation that does interfere with your body's own electrical system. And it actually provides a more organized, balanced, um, you know, organism because, you know, your brain, your heart, your liver, all of the, your organs and cells have their own electro electromagnetic field and we provide that balance in addition to that protection so that's what they're experiencing and that's why we see people contacting us and seeking us out to to understand what is happening uh within their own body and why they see those those benefits so i noticed you guys have some uh ambassadors like macy barber or tiki barber are there any other kind of big uh household names that you're able to tell us who, who have bought this product or support this product you know i uh i would say stay tuned we have a lot of really amazing news coming out it related to professional sports and athletes uh, that, that we'll be announcing and uh and i did see a photo of kim kardashian uh with one on the back of her phone so that yeah i mean unofficially she's posted on social media so um i you know i can't take too much credit for that but she did find her way just like i said there's the the number of product products that we ship to hollywood let's just say is a lot our, our top zip codes that we ship product to on a, let's say a, a revenue basis are these pri these top zip codes, like you know, like Beverly Hills, like a Malibu, like a Hollywood, like, um, Brentwood, uh, you know, La Jolla, California, like the amount of product that we ship to those regions is, is pretty, are you specifically targeting those regions or they're just coming to you naturally? Um, I think it's, it's definitely both. I mean, there's definitely, uh, when you look at the professional sports, there's definitely been a, a, a large word of mouth flywheel that's been created. Yes. Uh, I would say in hockey, 
too. We have, uh, we got a lot of penetration in, in that particular sport, as well as I would say NFL and uh, Major League Baseball. We've seen quite a bit of um, inbound people having inquiries and things like that. And like I said, stay tuned. We'll have a lot of really exciting things to announce along those fronts. But um, I would also say that it's our marketing machine that we've built does has been designed to speak to a particular user. And we, we understand the different needs and use cases for each types of user that, that we target. And so it, it wouldn't make sense for me to give a message of improved, uh, you know, relief for a neurological disorder to a high performing athlete. Right. Yeah. So what are the benefits to an athlete or what are the benefits to a high performer? It's not, it's, it's the, it's the same, but different. And so our marketing machine is designed to speak specific to different user personas. Okay. That kind of leads into my next question was, you know, since you've taken over, I mentioned this before, but the company's seen significant revenue growth. Mm -hmm. Um, you had your first EBITDA positive quarter, uh, most recently. So what are kind of the key uh, drivers of that success um, that you, you know, since you've taken over, what, it, what has been uh, your focus? Um, I think if I was to make it, put it into kind of two foundational ideas, one of them is focusing on high probability customers. And what I mean by that is we already kind of talked about kind of the, the polarization of the product category that we're in and the technology itself. And uh, I'm not super interested in spending a lot of time with people that need to be convinced that EMF is a problem. Mm -hmm. And so we've dialed up our marketing machine to really identify people that have raised their hand and say, I'm curious, or I know I need to do something. I just don't know what. Because I can't really have the conversation about the product until I get past that. Yeah. And once people say, hey, I'm, I'm interested or curious about this, then I can have the conversation, which then naturally leads them to why we exist and the problem that we solve. And so number one is really focus on high probability. I think I knew this and I, we have more and more data that suggests that on a global scale, that number of people is really, really large. And is specifically outside of North America. Now, the bulk of our business is in North America, but where we're seeing growth, uh, really substantial growth, is globally. And we, it, to the point that we've had to open up fulfillment centers in Australia, Europe. Uh, we have one coming online in the UK. Uh, recently, our, have began to work with another distributor in Taiwan. And those are because of the demand. And to be in order to, to, to serve that customer better, to putting the product closer there has, has really helped. And it helps with lowering the cost as well for that end consumer because they'll pay the taxes, tariffs, and things like that. We expect that global expansion to continue. Um, but that's the kind of the first pillar. The second pillar with them would be uh, really understanding the needs of the different people that are raising their hands, saying, I'm very curious about this. When we understand those needs, we can tailor the message to speak to that particular user. And we've identified today uh, really kind of six core users. It doesn't mean that there's more, but from a, our ability to fulfill and and reach, we we kept it simple, right? And and a couple examples would be like we talked about you know athletes and high performers, uh, biohackers, people that would label themselves as biohackers, people that are that are let's say maybe average you know people of average jobs, average lives but looking to optimize. They want to feel their best. They want to perform their best. They want to think their best, whatever it is, for whatever reason, right? Longevity, people that want to live a really long time is a trend right now. They find their way to us as well. Um, and they're looking to optimize every aspect of life from the way that they sleep to the way that they eat to when they eat to you know, cold therapy, red light therapy, all sorts of different things. They're super curious and open to new ideas. And that has been a, a, a rocket ship category for us as well. And it's interesting having paid attention to that category for 20 years myself, um, that this conversation around EMF has existed for a long time. Tim Ferriss wrote about it in 4-Hour Body, I guess, 15 years ago now. And, you know, the people like Ben Greenfield and Dave Asprey and all these guys that would probably put themselves in that biohacker group, they've been talking about EMF and the harmful effects and, and the need to protect for a very long time. And so that was an obvious one to me. I don't think I expected to get as much traction there as quickly as we did, though. 
And that one has been a foundational category for us. Also, because I think more people would say that they're in that category now than ever before. Um, that's one. The one I think that that I personally have um, an interest in, and and I've kind of pushed this one pretty pretty hard, has been the uh, infertility or fertility category. I I used to be uh, prior to areas I worked with Rec at Ben Kaiser as a chief growth officer, and w one of the brands that I was working with was in this category as well, uh, especially with mom and baby, and and then also fertility. Uh, it's a growing problem globally, and there is a lot of research that points to uh, cell phone and cell phone being in your pocket for men and women. Uh, Andrew Huberman, the the scientist and re neuroscientist from Stanford, dedicated quite a bit of time on his podcast specifically about this topic mm -hmm. and conclusively says it's a problem. And so that became kind of a passion of mine because I had a lot of data and a lot of experience in that category already. And that's another one we see a lot of traction. It's both male and female and again, global. So that's a big category. The next one, again, kind of staying in that same lines is uh, pregnant women. And I would say really any families that have young children, uh, mostly because they are developing organisms that are not nearly as hardy against these external environmental stressors. So our product really assists in protecting uh, those groups of people and really enhancing their lives. And I said, I won't get into the science of why EMF, you know, causes harm or what it does, but there's a lot of data that, that suggests that there's a real need to be concerned. So there's a lot of potential end users uh, here and you guys are doing what last year, even 5 million in revenue uh, this year, tracking, you know, maybe 10, 12. What, uh, what is the total overall market size for all of these end users and how much of that do you think you've captured already? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I, I know the data, like as far as what, what we've captured and what the opportunity is, you know, I would go back and say, we really kind of position ourselves as a technology yeah. and the consumer product that we're, that we talk a lot about is really our way to commercialize more research and to um, open up, you know, more doors of, we see a world where our technology is integrated into virtually every other piece of technology mm -hmm. as you know, called the catalytic converter for wireless communications and that is a huge differentiator for us and anyone else that claims to do anything like we do um just does not have that opportunity and, and the reason why is the most effective protection against emf would be blocking it well if you block it the signal doesn't work and your phone won't work so there's there's clothes there's clothing out there there's sleeves you can put your phone in there's curtains there's paint and there's a lot in the way of blocking but then you can't use your product your device right and so that's a big differentiator for us. The second big differentiator is the size of our product. If the closer to the source of radiation, the smaller our product needs to be to the point that, you know, it could be as thin as, you know, call it four sheets of paper to maybe the size of a, a small coin, you know, as far as diameter goes, which means anybody that wanted to take our technology and integrate it into theirs would not to change their design really at all because they could pretty much put it anywhere together. And so we see a world where you have, you know, uh, a, a cell phone with an Aries inside or a router with an Aries inside and that market's massive. And, and I'll let you do your own calculation, how, how big that one is. But today we see a really clear path to a hundred million dollars of revenue just with our consumer product. Uh, and just continuing to do what we do. Like I said, we've built a really good predictable, repeatable marketing machine that really allows us to identify a user, a potential user, tell the right story, deliver the message at the right time, and really move them to take action. And the only reason we haven't scaled faster was mostly because we kept running out of product. It wasn't because we couldn't find more users. Um, but the overall size, you know, I I think we, we looked at a survey out of it was either UK or Europe and roughly... 37% of the population was concerned, very concerned or concerned about electromagnetic radiation. And I think that number is just growing. Uh, and, I, and I also think that culture is catching up with the demand of regulation, the demand of technology companies take more responsibility about the problem because we are living out in a science experiment. There's been no long-term study done on the negative effects of, of radiation. And that's where like people like Andrew Huberman coming out and, and saying what he said, he's, he's a top 10 
podcaster on the planet. And that was pretty alarming. You saw France ban the iPhone 12 last year because of radiation concerns. And what that actually brought the light to was actually how many cell phones they had already banned. It was quite a bit more than I ever even knew about. And you see countries like Italy, Cyprus, Soviet Union, or Russia, all of those countries, I would say, on that side of the world, have strict regulation on Wi-Fi in schools and, and what they do to protect their children specifically. I think that's coming west, but I think it's going to take pressure to the consumer like we're doing to, to do that. So w- let's go back to the numbers for a bit. What are the product margins uh, on this specific product? And it seems like this is a very profitable uh, you know, business. If you're able to achieve $100 million in revenue and you have quite high margins, it seems like you, know, you guys are in for a, a very profitable uh, future. Absolutely. We've worked really hard in the last two years because, like I said, we've had really explosive growth to the point that we continue to run out of product. Uh, so that put a lot of, uh, and markets were, were difficult. So not having a lot of access to capital to actually solve some of those problems, we just had to get really lean and figure out how we build a more robust uh, systems and processes internally to mitigate the risk that could occur with more explosive growth. So the reason why you saw Q3 of 2023 and Q4 with, with good EBITDA numbers is because we solved those problems. Yeah. And um, from a margin standpoint, you will also see going back to 2021, I, you'll have to fact check me on this, but roughly 40 to 45% uh, gross margin. 2022 uh, was about 60% gross margin. Wow. So pretty large jump. Um, 2023, the, our unreported number will be somewhere around 65%. So we've continued to make gains there um, on gross margin. The actual, you know, COGS, uh, you know, stands somewhere between 12 to 15%. And in terms of order size, you guys are probably ordering small amounts right now. So you expect COGS to uh, decrease as we order more and more and and scale up the business, correct? Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, the silicon resonator, which is the core of of our product, is the same thing as a microchip. So our product, is has some of the same challenges of anyone that's trying to order microchips. We have not had those issues uh, because we are working with facilities that specialize in, uh, there's only a handful that can do what we need them to do. And so we are able to make, you know, small quantity uh, orders. However, we have scaled those up and we've, what we've done is really worked with them to build a forecast of growth. And so we are making pretty much every two weeks we're having deliveries. We've also done a lot around just stockpiling components and not stockpiling finished goods. So that way we can read and react to what's moving, what's selling, and then build as needed as a re- as reacting to, to the business versus trying to guess which is gonna, which is gonna work, right? And that's allowed us to be leaner and faster on, on getting product to the, to the end consumer. For potential investors, what do you think is the most compelling reason to uh, invest in American Aries over the next, you know, let's say five, 10 years? I may be biased, but, <laughs> you know, truthfully, uh, I like to be as logical as possible when, uh, you know, I have these conversations and be as rational as possible because I have to go execute, mm-hmm. right? And it's really important for me to say, uh, let's deal in facts. Everything that we do as a company is really data-driven and fact-based. Everything from the science that we communicate and we talk about, uh, we don't put out anything that isn't backed up by some sort of factual um, scientific you know, data or backbone. Our marketing strategy is extremely um, fact and data-driven, meaning I don't make bets recklessly. Like if I'm, if I'm making a big bet, I have a lot of data that says the probability of success is extremely high. And so I would expect the same thing when whatever I say, and I communicate outward, because that's how I run the business is we don't put anything out that we don't feel really strongly about. And I think the fact is with where we stand as a company today is, um, I think we're extremely undervalued. I think when we, you know, talk about the revenues we had last year, we talk about, you know, two strong quarters of, of EBITDA, knowing where we came from and, and where we are right now in that path. I think we've demonstrated as a management team our ability to execute and grow when the current was probably going against us. I think, especially because we're talking about really a consumer product. There aren't very many consumer products that, that had the percentage of growth that we had in this two-year span. 
And, and so that makes me extremely confident. I also know a lot of what the future looks like because I'm, I'm sitting on a lot of those contracts and those, those negotiations, the conversations that makes me extremely optimistic. And then I would say last, if, if I sat down with most people and we talked about our marketing strategy, I, I refer to it as a marketing machine. And the marketing machine is a highly predictable model. We work with um, VaynerMedia, who a lot of people know Gary Vaynerchuk. This is his media company. And I've worked with them for a long time. I worked them with Rec at Ben Kaiser previously. Um, I brought them over to, to Aries. And we have built a fantastic team um, in partnership with, with VaynerMedia. And that has allowed us to really build this very iterative, low-risk, high-probability machine. Uh, I'm I'm putting ads and stories and headlines in front of people that want those headlines and stories and then it resonates with. And that's why our converting our growth has been so good. And we haven't really hit a ceiling on how much money we can put into that machine. Our ceiling hit, like I said before, has been inventory, has been able to actually service the demand that we've created. So when I sit with investors and I sit with partners and I sit with suppliers and I'm and I'm forecasting the next 12, 24 months, it's with a high level of confidence because we're, we are very data-driven and very fact-based. Yeah. And uh, I think it's interesting. You guys have, you know, until this most recent financing, it, it's been kind of, you know, very lean, like you said, but also access to capital was maybe uncertain, mm -hmm. yet you still managed to consistently double your revenues year over year and achieve uh, EBITDA positive status. So it'd be interesting to see, you know, with this injection of capital, if you are able to scale these revenues, considering the margins, things could get very um, interesting yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Look, I I um, I build businesses and and have done that for a long time at a high level and have been successful at that. And I've been successful because, like I mentioned before, I rarely make a big bet. Yeah. And because a big bet is hard to unwind, and and it's hard to recover sometimes, especially when you're small. And the markets were extremely tight the, the years that I've been with Aries. And we were heads down. I just said, I only know how to do one thing, and that's grow businesses. Yeah. And so I only know how, the only way I know how to solve problems, these financial problems, and which is really all problems of any growth company or any young company, is sell product. And so we went heads down for two years and sold product. And we came up a couple of times and, and you know talked to investors, got you know, a couple you know bumps of of money to keep us going and you know, with some real you know, core investors that believe what we're doing. And again, in, you know, I would challenge anyone to go back and look at the history of the company and see the hole that we came from. Mm -hmm. And again, the confidence that I hope people have in us is understanding that complete story and to say, wow, if they did that when they probably shouldn't have, what does it look like when they have the money and the inventory? What does that look like now? Yeah. Right. And so for me, we built a team that knows how to execute and do so confidently and accurately with 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 everything that we do, and so that's what I'm super charged up about, right? Yeah. I'm, you're getting me super charged. <laughs> so, no, I, I think that's that's a good summary. And and once again, thank you for for taking the time to do this. Personally, I I'm a shareholder, and I'm I'm very excited to see uh, what you guys can do over the next few years. Cool, it's, it's very exciting stuff. Well, thanks yeah. so much. Thanks yeah. so much for uh, the conversation. Obviously, you can you can sit down and. Talk to me, and I'm gonna get excited. You know, the more that we talk about it, I I, I think uh, it's always challenging for me to communicate some of these things because I have so much information and knowledge, and like I said, this data that I've talked about, and I and I have so much information about what the future looks like, and I couldn't be more fired up right now. Like, yeah. like, like I feel like I'm at the starting gate, like I'm a horse, like a thoroughbred inside this starting gate, and this company is about ready to shoot out of it, yeah. and that's what's exciting right now. Yeah, I love it. I love it, Josh. You're an amazing salesman, and uh, I know I, I can't wait. I'm super excited. Cool. Thank hey, you. Cheers.